reading to the Bible in a year, November 28th, 1 Chronicles chapters 24 through 25, 1 Peter chapter 5, Micah 3, and Luke chapter 12. Now, the divisions of the sons of Aaron were these. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no sons, so Eleazar and Ithamar ministered as priests. And David was Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, divided them according to the uh, rather according to their assignments for their service. And more chief men were found uh, from the sons of Eleazar than the sons of Ithamar. So they divided them thus. There were sixteen heads of fathers' households of the sons of Eleazar, and eight sons, or rather eight of the sons of Ithamar, according to their fathers' households. Thus they were divided by lot, the one as the, uh, sorry, the one as the other, for they were leaders for the sanctuary and leaders for God, both of them, the sons, or both of them from the sons of Eleazar and the sons of Ithamar. Shemaiah, the son of Nethanel, the scribe, from the Levites, wrote them down in the presence of the king the princes, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and the heads of their father, rather the heads of the father's households, of the priests and of the Levites, one father's household taken for Eleazar and one for Ithamar. Now, the first lot came out for uh, Jehoirib, the second for Jediah, the third for Harim, the fourth for Seorim, the fifth for Malchijah, the sixth for Amijamin, the seventh for Hakaz, the eighth for Abijah, the ninth for Jeshua, the tenth for Shechaniah, the eleventh for Eliashib, the twelfth for Jakim, the thirteenth for Hupa, the fourteenth for Jeshab, sorry, Jeshabeab, the fifteenth for Bilga, the sixteenth for Amir, the seventeenth for Hezer, the eighteenth for Hapazes. Yep, we're going to go with that. The nineteenth for Pethahiah, the twentieth for um, Jehezekel. Yeah, Jehezkel. Yep. Uh, the 21st for Jachin, the 22nd for Gamul, the 23rd for Deliah, and the 24th for Maaziah, or Maaziah. These were their assignments for their service when they came into the house of Yahweh according to the legal judgment rendered to them by the hand of Aaron their father, just as Yahweh, the God of Israel, had commanded him. Now, for the sons of the, rather, for the rest of the sons of Levi, the sons of Amran, Shub- Shubael, uh, and the sons of Shubael, Jediah, of Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, Isha the first, of the Isharites, uh, Shelemoth, of the sons of Shelemoth, Jahath, the sons of Hebron, uh, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth, the sons of Uziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shemir. The brother of Micah, Ishiah, of the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Mar- uh, Marari, Mali and Mushi, the sons of Jaaziah, Beno, the sons of Marari, or Marari, by Jaaziah were Beno, Shoham, Zakur, and Ibri, by Mali, um, Eleazar, who had no sons, by Kish, the sons of Kish, Jeremiel. The sons of Mushi, Mali, Adar, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites according to their fathers' households. These also cast alongside their relatives the sons of Aaron in the presence of David the king, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of the fathers' households of the priests and of the Levites, the heads of the fathers' household, alongside those of his younger brother. Moreover, David and the commanders of the army separated for of the service, some of the sons of Asaph and of Haman and Jeduthun, who were to prophesy with lyres, harps, and cymbals. And the number of those who performed their service was of the sons of Asaph, Zakur, uh, Joseph, Nathaniah, and um, Asharela, Asharela. Of the sons of Asaph were under the direction of Asaph, who prophesied under the direction of the king, of Jeduthun. Of the sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah, Zeri, or Zerai, uh, Jeshiah, Shimei, or Shimei, uh, 
uh, Heshabiah, Mattathiah, six, under the direction of their father, Jeduthun, with a harp, who prophesied in giving thanks and praising Yahweh. Of Haman, the sons of Haman, Bukiah, Mataniah, Uziel, Shel, rather, Shebuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hani, Hanana, Hanani, there we go, um, Eliatha, Gidalth, Gidalti? I'm going to go with Gidalti. And uh, Ramam Te Ezer, Josh Bekasha, Malothi, or Malothi, perhaps, um, Hothir, and Maziah, sorry, Mahazioth. These were the sons of Haman, the king's seer, to exalt him uh, according to the words of God. So God gave 14 sons and 13, rather, and three daughters to Haman. All these were under the direction of their father to sing in the house of Yahweh with cymbals, harps, and lyres for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Haman were under the direction of the king. And their number, who were trained in singing to Yahweh with their relatives, all who were skillful, was 228. And they all cast lots for their responsibilities, each alongside the other, the small as well as the great, the teacher as well as the pupil. Now, the first lot came out for Asaph to Joseph, the second for Gedaliah. He, with his relatives and his sons, were twelve. The third to Zakur, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The fourth to Isri, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The fifth to Nechaniah, rather, Nethaniah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The sixth to Bukiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The seventh to um, Jesharela, Jesharela. Jeshar, J-E-S-H-A-R-E-L-A-H, Jesharela, his sons and his relatives, twelve, the eighth to Jeshiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve, the ninth to Mataniah, his sons and his relatives, twelve, the tenth to Shimei, or Shimei, his sons and his relatives, twelve, the eleventh to Azarel, his sons and his relatives, twelve, the twelfth to Rather, yeah, the eleventh to Azarel, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The thirteenth to Shubael, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The fourteenth to Mattathiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The fifteenth to Jeremoth, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The sixteenth to Hananiah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The seventeenth to Josh Bekasha, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The eighteenth to Hanani, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The thirteenth, sorry, the thirteenth, the nineteenth to Malathi, or Malathi, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The twentieth to Eliathah, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The twenty-first to Hothir, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The twenty-second to Gedalti, or Gedaltai, his sons and his relatives, twelve. The twenty-third to Mahazioth, his sons and his relatives, twelve. And the twenty-fourth to Ramamti Azer, his sons and his relatives, twelve. Moving on now to First Peter chapter five. Therefore, I exhort the elders, these are the pastors or leaders in your church among you, as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, overseeing, not under compulsion, but willingly, according to God, and not for dishonest gain, but with eagerness, nor as yet lording it over those allotted to you, but being examples to the flock. For when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. You, younger men, likewise, be subject to your elders. And all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished among your brethren who are in the world. 
And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, strengthen, confirm, and ground you. To him be might forever and ever. Amen. Through Silvanus, our faithful brother as I regard him, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and bearing witness that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son, Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to all of you who are in Christ. Bringing up the rest of the notes here for you. There are, again, quite a few of them. Here we go. Now, Micah chapter 3. And I said, Hear now, heads of Jacob, and rulers of the house of Israel. Is it not for you to know justice? You who hate good and and love evil, who tear off their skin from them and their flesh from their bones, and who eat the flesh of my people, strip off their skin from them, break their bones, and spread them out as uh, as for the pot and as meat in a cauldron. Then they will cry out to Yahweh. He will not answer them. Instead, they will hide, or he will hide his face from them at that time, because they have practiced evil deeds. Thus says Yahweh concerning the prophets who lead my people astray. When they have something to bite with their teeth, they call out, Peace. But against him who puts nothing in their mouths, they set themselves apart for war. Therefore, it will be night for you without vision, and darkness for you without divination. The sun will go down on the prophets, and the day will grow uh, black over them. The seers will be ashamed, and the diviners will be humiliated. Indeed, they will all cover their mouths, because there is no answer from God. The other hand, I am filled with power, with the spirit of Yahweh, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression, even to Israel his sin. Now hear this, heads of the house of Jacob, and rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and twist everything that is straight, and who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with violent injustice. Her heads pronounce judgment for a bribe, and her priests instruct for a price, and her prophets divine for money. Yet they lean on Yahweh, saying, Is not Yahweh in our midst? Evil will not come upon us. Therefore, on account of you, Zion will be plowed as a field, Jerusalem will become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house of God will become a high place, rather will become high places of a forest." all the notes to hear. Let's move on to conclude today in Luke chapter 12. At this time, after so many thousands of the crowd had gathered together that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began saying to his disciples first, be on your guard for the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. But there is nothing covered up that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. Accordingly, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in the inner rooms will be proclaimed upon the housetops. But I say to you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. I will show you whom to fear. Fear the one who, after he has killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows told for two, uh, sorry, sold for two asari? And yet not one of them is forgotten before God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And I say to you, everyone who confesses me before men The Son of Man will confess him also before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. 
And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. This is so weird. It's skipping so far ahead in this text. Rather skipping forward and then back. Yeah, we'll go back to where we were. Once again, everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. What does this mean? We've talked about this before. Um, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is to attribute to Satan the work of God. Now, when they bring you before the synagogues and rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you are to speak in your defense or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to speak or what you ought to say. And someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator over you? This is all back to what was said about Moses. Then he said to them, Watch out and be on your guard against every form of greed. For not even uh, when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, the land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, ah, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now, who will own what you have prepared? So is the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said to his disciples, for this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat, nor for your body as to what you will put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, and they have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? Therefore, if you cannot do even a, a very little thing, why do you worry about the other matters? Or rather, why do you worry about other matters? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, but I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? Do not seek what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. For all these things the nations of the world eagerly seek, but your Father knows that you need these things. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for your Father is well pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give it as charity. Make yourselves money belts which do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Gird up your loins and keep your lamps lit and be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master will find awake when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at table and will come and wait on them. Whether the rather excuse me, whether he comes in the second watch or even the third and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this that if the head of the house had known at, at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Well, you too be ready, 
for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Now, Peter said, Lord, are you addressing this parable to us or to everyone else as well? And the Lord said, who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom his master will put in charge of his servants, to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says in his heart, my master will be a long time in coming, begins to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces, and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That slave who knew his master's will, and did not get ready or act in accord with his will, received many beatings. But the one who did not know it, and committed deeds worthy of a beating, will receive but a few. For everyone who has been given much will be Rather, from everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And to whom they have entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. I have come to cast a fire upon the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo. How distressed I am until it is accomplished, until it is finished. Do you think that I came to grant peace on earth? I tell you no, but rather division. From now on, five members in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he will also, rather than he was also saying to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, well, immediately, immediately you say a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see a south wind blowing, you say, oh, it'll be a hot day, and it happens. Think about why this is. Storms typically move from west to east. Um, A storm arising in the west would be arising over the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. That's blowing um, into the land. It's going to rain. Things coming from the south are coming from a desert region. So when you see it coming in, you know it's going to be a dry, hot day. Back to the text. You hypocrites, you know how to examine the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why do you not examine this present time? Why do you not even judge for yourselves what is right? For while you are going with your opponent to appear before the magistrate, on your way there, make an effort to settle with him, so that he may not drag you before the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not get out of there until you have paid the very uh, last lepton, roughly penny, smallest amount. That's all the text for today. That is all the reading and all the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.